Lou and Adam of Manticore. Welcome to 69 Faces of Rock. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Yourself? Great. Doing good, man. All right. So tell us about the beginning of Manticore. I just got, we all just got sick of hearing watered down music. You know, everything was weak. So about 2000, got together, me and a guy had talked about it for four years, our original guitar player. Four years we talked about it, finally got together, wrote a demo, found him, and just went from there. You know, just we just wanted to hear something ugly and raw. Everything was too polished and at the gates and stuff like that. And just, I don't know, just tweedly, tweedly. And just, that's not our thing. Yeah. yeah. That's about it. Just ready to bring the brutality and uh, just disgustingness of fucking heavy metal back. So. Just, How did you even find each other? Uh, I was playing in a band and we were ended up uh, disbanding and a uh, guy that was playing guitar in my band at the time ended up knowing these guys. So hooked up, uh, played phone tag for a while and then uh, ended up joining. Mm -hmm. So, What was the scene like back in, um, in Cleveland at that point? Oh shit, <laughs> there were probably three shows a week. I mean, there were tons. I mean, Incantation were there at the time, still living there, so there was, I mean, they were a local band to us, you know, I mean, you could see Incantation 10 times a year, you know, and not ever go more than 10 miles from your house. I mean, it was a whole different thing. I mean, there were so many good bands back in those days. I mean, Decrepit was still around, I think, in those days. Or the very, well, Decrepit might have ended, but you still had all those guys, other projects, Soul. I mean, there was just a lot of, there was a lot of good underground death metal in Cleveland. I mean, Ohio Death Fest. In those years when we first started, was, Brian had that going strong, you know, with international bands coming over to play. I, there was, I, I think when Emperor played in Cleveland, there were probably 1,400 people there. I think I saw plates from probably 14 different states in the parking lot at the club. I mean, just Cleveland was packed, you know. I mean, Cleveland always had tons of great shows. Um, who are your early influences? My early influences? Oh. Uh, well, like, uh, Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse for me, uh, more along the lines of, uh, shit, what, actually, uh, early White Zombie for me also as well, too, uh, just so much to draw off of, so it was just, uh, pretty much a hodgepodge of anything, if I liked it, I'd listen to it and try to incorporate some of the playing styles into what we did, so. Lou? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's a long list, right? No, I'm old, so <laughs> my, my, my list is different. Like, seriously, like, for me, it was ki like early Kiss, like late 70s Kiss. And Rush, huge Rush fan from back in those days. You know, I mean, Black Sabbath, of course. You know, early Metallica, meaning Cliff Burton days only. Um, people like that, you know. I mean, I. I drew more from not metal because there wasn't a lot of metal till I got to that age where I would have liked it anyhow. <laughs> so it was just hard rock. So a lot, of, a lot of UFO, Scorpions, you know, bands like that, just old hard rock. So tell me about how uh, was the style of your band established? Like when did you kind of come into your own? Uh, I don't even, I don't know. It's just from day, I mean, the thing was, when I joined my old band, we shared a practice spot with another band. Their guitar player and me, we're the two who pretty much said, okay, we're gonna do this. And the first night we met, we both said that we were gonna do a violent, unrelenting, satanic band that was different than the bands we were in at the time. So I mean, pretty much from the first day me and Dave met, we knew what we were gonna do. We just needed to find a time to do it. So, I mean, I don't know that, we always laugh and joke and say we're devolving on every album and we're fine with that. We're fine with devolving, you know? It doesn't have to get fancier and prettier. So. I don't know if we really ever have a style. It's just what we do is just ugly. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's somehow there's some doom songs almost. There's some grind type songs. I mean, there's everything on an album. You know, I mean, it's whatever we're into at that moment. That's what we're writing. Yeah. Um, how did you get noticed? I mean, did you release any demos? What What was it like for you? Uh, what released the demo? Was that O One or something? Yeah. Uh, Ritual cleansing of the whore. It ended up uh, getting on uh, in the hands of. Uh, who was that? A Chicago native? Yeah. <laughs> and Andy from Judas Iscariot. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, like what he heard put us on uh, 
what was it Breath of Night? Breath of Night and Merciless. And then uh, ended up doing uh, Europe. What shortly after that? Yeah. And did what about like two weeks or something like that over there? What was that experience like for for a new band? <laughs> uh, oh, it was great. It's a learning experience. I tell you that you know you learn what you can and cannot do and get away with that kind yeah. of stuff. So, <laughs> it's a learning experience. It uh, it, it definitely Human knocks endurance. you down. Yeah, yeah. It knocks you down a peg until you you learn what the hell you're actually supposed to do. So. Yeah. So how long before your uh, first album came out? Oh hell! Yeah. Ritual cleansing came out. I mean, we we got together at the end of October. Well, we figured the band's official date is like the end of October 2000. We recorded Ritual the first week of December, so five weeks later we were recording, and it came out in January. And then I, I don't know. We went to Europe in '02, and the album, the first album, like Ritual Cleansing came out our first day of the tour. But we already had Bowels of the Holy, the first actual album that was already written. Mm -hmm. And had we recorded it before? I'm not sure if we recorded it before we went on tour or if we recorded it after we got back. But the album was written. We were playing songs off of that on the first tour already. So, I mean, it just it was just a matter of, okay, who's going to release this? You know, I mean, it was written like that. I mean, we pretty much, we wrote the demo songs and then within probably six months had most of the first album completely written. Have you done any touring in the United States for this? Um, not, the new album isn't out yet, but yeah, we've toured the U.S. with Diafago. Mm -hmm. We toured, we did a Northeast tour with Diafago. We did a Southeast and Midwest tour with Kill. We've done West Coast shows on our own. You know, we've done plenty of shows in Texas and you know different places like that. But no interest in doing a U.S. tour. Mm -hmm. um, how would you describe those uh, those records, the early two albums? Um. I don't know really know how I would uh yeah <laughs> it's how to do that it, yeah it's because it's not like you listen to your own stuff and go oh my god it was so groundbreaking or anything like that but I maybe I mean, talk about the emotions you felt when you were recording them uh, just uh maybe a lot of anger and resentment towards just idiots man and just <laughs> channeling dark energies and you know uh, that's basically it just like a lot of those uh, albums are just basically hatred towards mankind like coming right. out of my end I guess if you will so that's basically what it is is just hey can't stand people hey <laughs> this is just yeah <laughs> that's about it uh, what kind of a fan base did you build like at this point uh honestly we don't pay much attention to it mm -hmm. to, as weird as that sounds it was I mean, at the end of the day, we kind of write and play music for us. We write what we want to hear. If other people like it, that's awesome. If they don't, that's fine too. Doesn't matter. So I really don't pay much attention to that, though. I know the people that are fans are big fans. The ones I've talked to. I mean, and, I mean, overseas we've seen them do pretty well. There's a lot of people that are into it. You know, certain markets here, but you know, it's not for them. It's for us. At the end of the day, we're sort of selfish that way. We, we write for us. Um, what does your life look like apart from being in a band? It just work. It's all we do. <laughs> it's literally all we do, work. And when you're done with that, you work some more. So other than that, uh, just staying busy. That's basically it. Lou? Uh, I work, two kids that are both older now, but they're both still at the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just normal life. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty much you. normal <laughs> life, man. Just play music, you know. How are you able to maintain being in the band and being a family man and, and being employed? Uh, my I, my boss is cool. I've always had jobs where they were fine if I wanted to take time off to do stuff, so that was never an issue. I have a wife that pretty much, most, it's amazing she's not here tonight because she doesn't miss too many shows. I mean, so everyone knows her too. So, I mean, she's totally into this music has been her entire life. We've been together since the 80s, you know, and she's into it since then. So, I mean, it's, she doesn't care. So that makes life easy, you know? Great. <laughs> Adam, what about you? How do you mean? Uh, just what I got to... Or what's the challenge? <laughs> uh, the challenge, I guess, is just finding the perfect balance for everything. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, you work full time, you do this when you can. Uh, like he said, he's got two kids. I got one myself and girlfriend and trying to just 
find that juggling for it and make it all work. Don't know how, but it happens. <laughs> um, when do you find time to actually play, record music? Because you were telling me that you not, don't really hurry when it comes to releasing albums. Right. You take your time, and, <laughs> but you still make it happen. Well, Tim lives an hour and a half away from us, so we only practice once every two weeks. So for practicing for a show, it's one thing. If not, then we're just, you know, playing with riffs and coming up. So, I mean, things happen. It's just we're not in a huge hurry, really. To, I mean, when we get it, when we're ready to do it, we do it. We go in, we record everything pretty much in one, two days max. Record everything live. We just hammer it out. So we just practice to get to that point where we can play it live, one mm -hmm. shot, bang. So, I, I don't know. I mean, we make the time once every. T it's only once every two weeks that we get together. We just get together for the full day. You know, it's an all-day thing. We play, we practice, we maybe cook out, eat, you know, practice some more, and just do our thing. You know, we make it a full-day thing. So it's not, it doesn't, it's not a three nights a week I have to be here and we're not doing anything but playing local shows. And, you know, it's not something like that. It's where you enjoy it when you only get to do it a couple times a month. You know, try to make the best of that time. Yeah. Um, being in a band for over 20 years, it takes a lot of commitment. Uh, yeah. What drives you? Stupidity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Other than stupidity? <laughs> but you're right. Um, I mean, there's not I a just, it's, no, it's, it's, just, <laughs> just the love of music still. Yeah. Uh, basically, one of those, as you get older, you realize that you, people are going to be retarded no matter what you do. So it's um, one of those that's just still for the love of music, for you know what we stood for. Shit, 22 years ago yeah. now or whatever and just keep being a driving force that's literally all it is it just keeps you going Lou same question oh yeah it's just I mean I've always played music of some sort so there's no reason to stop that's what I do I mean I don't do it for any other reason than I enjoy it yep. so as long as I enjoy it I'm gonna do it so, I mean, that's what keeps me going. Just, I, you got to have something you enjoy in life. Our life is miserable. <laughs> right. So. Thank you. Thank you.